this session I'm going to demonstrate how to use the calendar feature in Microsoft Outlook. The calendar in Microsoft Outlook is a very powerful feature that is integrated within Microsoft Outlook along with email, contacts, and tasks, and such. And that's what makes Microsoft Outlook so powerful in a business environment. The calendar feature not only allows you to keep track of your own appointments for specific dates and times, but it also allows you to schedule meetings with others and invite them to meetings and check their calendar and all that type of thing. Once you open Outlook, you have your emails and such, but here in the bottom left, you also have the option for calendar. Now on the left hand side, you'll have the dates and times for the calendar. Further down, you'll have the multiple calendars that you might have access to. By default, you have access to only your own calendar. However, if other users choose to share their calendar with you, you'll be able to have access to their calendar as well over here and we'll learn about that later. So basically, you have the months and the dates here on the left and then on the right hand side you have these different views. Notice you have the today's view, the next seven days. You have the view for just today, next seven days. The work week, it's skipping the Saturday and Sunday here. The monthly view and then just the scheduled view. So you're just looking at specific days and what your calendar looks like the, for those specific days. Manage calendars where you can open somebody else's calendar and group calendars and you can email the calendar, share your calendar and publish it and all that type of thing and check the calendar permissions. So typically in day-to-day -day work, you're going to probably use the day view first or the work week view, one of those views. Now, to create an appointment, there are a couple of ways to do that. You could be on any of those views. It doesn't matter which one. But the day view, let's say I go here. It's about 12 o'clock. Let's say at 2 o'clock. I select the block of time. And then I just type the appointment that I want to create. So, for example, and then simply hit enter. At this point, notice that once I hit enter, the appointment has been entered. At this stage, I have additional options here that show up about my appointment. So I could choose to show this as busy or tentative or I'm free and such or out of the office. So free, of course, that means that somebody else can schedule an appointment with me. My calendar will look free to others, even though I have something scheduled for it. Working somewhere else and such or tentative and busy and out of office, of course, that means what they say and somebody will see that you're busy at that particular point in time for that block of time. Another way to create an appointment is by simply clicking here on new appointment and then putting the subject and then here I'm putting more details about my appointment. I could put uh, my location, the date and time, how long it's going to be and then I can put also additional details about my appointment. Additionally you have more options as you can see and we'll touch on some of those other ones such as the scheduling assistant and notes and all that type of thing shortly here you notice you have this recurrence option and this is how you can make a meeting so it shows up every let's say this meeting takes place monthly on the 21st of every month and then you want to end it after 10 occurrences so that's how you do a repeating meeting so pick your parameters here and then click OK and then press save and close. Now if we go into the monthly view, this will show up the same way from month to month. It's added to your calendar. So that's how you create a meeting for personal use and also create that meeting so that it shows up from month to month. You can also create a meeting for a specific date by simply going to the date first here on the calendar. So let's say you want to create a meeting for the 18th of uh, January. Click on the 18th here. It takes you directly to that date and then pick the time. So 8 to 9 and the meeting has been entered. Also specify whether this meeting is private or not. Notice up here on the very top there is this option for private. When you mark a meeting as private that means that if you give access to an assistant or somebody else 
when you give them access you can choose not to share the private meetings it'll just show the time as busy for you but they'll not see what you're doing this would come in handy for example you are using your work calendar for personal meetings in the evenings and weekends take out the trash or whatever your assistant doesn't need to know that at seven o'clock you're going to take out the trash you can just mark this meeting as a private meeting so this is how you control it you go right here under this and you choose to mark it private as far as the sharing aspect of it i'll cover that in a separate video shortly